and we're back. We are looking at Vue.js. Oh, and reality is creeping in. Is it this side? It's this side. There we go. Okay. So um, when we left off, we had this kind of grid view. Um, but if we look at if we look at the view uh, Vue.js dev tools, we'll see we just actually have the map data. Um, can we do that? No, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, basically, we don't have any view components in here or sub views. We just have one root element and then a bunch of divs within it, which is not great because that means we can't really inspect the individual cells well. What we should do is we should make a component that is responsible for the logic of each tile. So let's do that. Let's take this and put it in here. Okay. Now, instead of having a div here, what we'll do is we'll have a tile. Um, for the moment, we will uh, we will bind. Remember the binding syntax that we looked at. We will bind. Hmm. 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 Row to y value. And then we'll create the component, and we'll say that this accepts. Uh, well, I mean, this isn't exactly, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? This is for each. We have to do a V4 actually. Okay. We're not going to bind the whole row. We're going to say cell is what we've bound X value. And this will be for X index X value in Y value. Wow. The worst descriptive names. Anyway, we don't need to repeat this anymore. But here we're going to say this accepts params an array with a cell property in it. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't break as badly as I'm expecting. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of tiles now. However, these things are no longer accurate. Now we have to say cell and format it as JSON and we should have zeros. Lots of zeros, no zeros, no data actually, um, which is interesting. So we've bound cell to X value, but we're not seeing, we're not seeing that in here. We're just seeing a whole bunch of tiles created, one for each thing, one for each tile, uh, for each X and Y coordinate here. Hello, welcome. I am not even gonna try and pronounce your name. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, um, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to. That's amazing though. Welcome to the stream. Um, so for each of these, we know that the number of cells that are being rendered is accurate. However, this isn't binding well. So what do we do? What do we do? We accept the, 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 um, cell params hmm that's quite curious that's quite curious because the inspector says we're not getting any data nothing is being bound to those things if we give other attributes here we'll see those obviously well i mean i say obviously but maybe not obviously is the thing do I need to allow foo in here? No. Um, that's pretty weird. Hmm. View params, data binding syntax. Let's figure this out. Attributes, bind expressions, filters, directives, arguments, v bind href. shorthands okay so href is url uh, which is to say if this has data here if we had data here and we returned a function to generate this stuff because it's shared return object um, cell and here we could say uh, cell value then we'd see a whole lot of uh, cell values i'm guessing a cell value. Okay. 
So it's actually the params that's the problem, the way that I'm defining that. Params, move, class and style bindings. Hmm, interesting. So I don't want to see that, but maybe components will tell me what I'm looking for. That's how we're creating it. Template. Okay, fair enough. Local registration. That's not what I want. Option caveats. Yes, I know about that. Template passing. TR is my component. That's interesting. What does that actually do? Case of a custom element you should use is special attribute. Meh. Props. Props, not params. Silly me. Okay. <laughs> Props cell. Okay, so we can remove this and now we should have access to that cell value. Zeros. Zeros all the way down. Great. That's great. Okay. So, um,. Let's do an X and a Y on here as well. So we have access to these properties as defined by the map. X is, uh, this will be X index and Y is Y index. There we go. So that goes across the line and then at some point it does this okay that's fantastic that is fantastic why uh, why coordinate mm, do I want to do that instead that's a little bit more accurate X coordinate It's a little bit better, I think. Does it still work? Hmm? Hmm? Okay, yeah, it's a little bit better. Now let's abstract this row a little bit because I don't know if I want it to be class row the whole time, forever. So I'll do it like this and I'll change this to cell template and row template. And here I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll just actually put this right here. Why not? Okay, um, but for this, we will say, I mean, do we want to say this? Um, let's say row, bind the data to that, and we loop the rows for as many as we have in the map. And then for each row, we loop the tiles for as many as we have in the row. Which means here we need to define a row component and we need to change the tile component to cell. Row. Oops. Row. And this accepts a map property. And then cell. And this accepts. Uh, this goes for the cell template. Okay, let's try that. Broken? Not broken. Row. Okay, but we don't have cells inside here. What's up with that? Oh. We don't have that. Row again, we still don't have cells inside here. What's going on? Hmm? 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 Where are the cells? Row, cell. We need to have this up here, maybe. Does the order matter? I'm expecting to see a whole bunch of cells here, but I'm not seeing them. I don't think the order matters. Hmm. 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 Oh, I'm not binding a row in here, am I? Uh, nor am I binding Y coordinate in here. I'm just going to call these Y, actually. X. X. Why? This is pro. Look, I mean, this is obviously not the most fantastic way <laughs> of um, 
using Vue. It's obviously not what it was meant for originally, but still, I think it's interesting. Okay, now we have these back, we have the rows, and we have the cells, which is very HTML table-like. I've just recreated the HTML tables, sort of, only poorly. Let's get some styling around here. Oh, tile. Let's say, um, uh, what do we do here? Um, padding, naught, margin, naught, cursor, default, what else? Font size, 14 pixels. Ooh. Found family, Helvetica, color or something not completely black. Oh my word. <laughs> Helvetica. There we go. Okay, then for the map, what am I doing? It's because I'm trying to watch chat at the same time. For the map, we'll say margin. Nah, let's do it absolute. Top 25, left 25, border solid. What does this look like? So many errors. What's that about? Duplicate value found in V4 X cell in row. Hmm, what are we doing here? Okay, we've bound map. What is it trying to tell me here? Is there a nice error message? No, duplicate value found in V4 Excel in row zero. Use track by index. Interesting, okay. So it's doing this inside the loop, which is a problem. Um, maybe we do something like track by... Y... X, something like that. I mean, would that help, do you think? Oh, that's not right. Hmm, what's this about? What's this about? Do I have to use this exact expression? I mean, does that make... S that's kind of bizarre. That's kind of bizarre. I don't understand what this is. But it's obviously got something to do with the fact that I've got two V4s that I'm doing um, in a nested structure. So I'll just leave it like that. Um, <laughs> can't be the worst thing if the errors go away, right? What is this? What is this render on here? The row gets the map. Why am I assigning the map down here? Is that the problem? Map is undefined. So I have Y in the row. Maybe if I delete this, was that the problem? Was it because I was binding this twice? No, problems back. Hmm, that's pretty weird. I don't know what, what the solution to that thing is. Anyway, um, I can start doing rows and cells here. So I'll just start by styling cells as display inline block. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Okay, font size zero pixels. Font size 14 pixels. When you do display block and you've rendered divs with space in between them, new lines in between them, as is the case with this formatting, what you're going to get is single space characters 
which get between cells. And so you'll have like weird spaces in between your elements. A solution to that, not the best one admittedly, but a solution to that is to set font size ridiculously small for that white space and something legible for the elements between that white space. Uh, now, width we can set to, let's say 16 by 16 grid. Is that what we want to do? All right, 16 by 16. Um, line height, 16 pixels. Text align, <laughs> center. I'm trying to just style this really nicely. That's the thing, that's the thing. Maybe uh, let's size this up to 32 by 32. So we have nice biggish blocks that we can look at. And um, let's also give these, let's remove this border, but add it to cells and make it very light and say border collapse, border, border collapse, collapse. So we don't have duplicate borders or at least like, oh, it didn't really do what I hoped it would do. Anyway, um, also this cursor default doesn't seem to be, did I spell it right? Totally did. Oh, because <laughs> dot buddy isn't a thing. Fine. Okay. So this looks a little bit better. Um, and now we have a grid. Now we have a grid of squares, so we can start to make this into our map. But what we're going to have to do when we have a little playable character is we're going to have to have keyboard events and we're going to have to move the player character around separate to the cells on the map if there are no collisions. That was a very loaded sentence, but basically we need to have a separate component inside here to represent the player that is higher than all the other elements so that it's on top of the document. And then we want to have keyboard events so that we can move the player around on the screen. And if we move the player around and actually the player would be walking into a tree or a wall or something, then we stop the player from moving and we keep the player in that square where they are before the collision. Um, and this, this all sounds very exciting and I want to carry on with that, but um, I'm going to take another quick break. So I'll see you in two minutes again.